Hi everybody, Rob here from Blues Wireless, and I want to talk about what seems like kind of a crazy topic today, and that being optimizing power consumption on a full-size Raspberry Pi 4 Model B single board computer. Why is that crazy? Well, 99 times out of 100, Pis are generally hooked up to a relatively stable power grid, so who cares if you can shave off 100 milliamps here or there? Well, there are certainly some people who do care. Maybe you're running a Pi off a battery pack in a remote setting, Maybe that pack is recharged via a solar array. You know, building a more sustainable Pi is never a bad idea, right? Well, before we get started, my last disclaimer is that if you're truly invested in the Raspberry Pi ecosystem, maybe using a Pi Zero, got one right here, one of these, or maybe a Pico, the Raspberry Pi microcontroller, uh, are better options, right? While the full-size Pi consumes about 600 milliamps when idle, the Zero and Pico gobble up a mere 190 milliamps, respectively, on average. So today I'm running a newly set up stock Raspberry Pi 4 running Buster. I also have this cheap USB digital tester, as it's called, which will show me the active power consumption of my Pi. This will let us send some commands and see how the power consumption adjusts. And I'm running a VNC connection into my Pi so we can see what's happening as we do it. All right, let's start with the tips. So if you're running your Raspberry Pi in a headless configuration, it's likely you can get away with not powering the onboard USB controller. Now note that even if you aren't using a mouse or keyboard, they are still actually powered. So to disable the USB controller on your Raspberry Pi, execute this command in your terminal. And then to re-enable the USB controller if you need it again, you simply pass bind instead of unbind. Also note that after a reboot, the USB controller will be enabled automatically. So let's see how much we saved with that. So I'm seeing an average of maybe 450 milliamps. Now again, on a headless Pi, you by definition don't need to hook up a monitor. If that's the case, you can also disable the HDMI output. So to disable that output, we can execute the following command. And this will probably kill my VNC session, so let's see what happens. Uh, it actually didn't, so that's good. I thought it would. Um, and let's check out our power consumption. Looks like we shaved off maybe 0.02 amps. That's not horrible. All right, let's keep going here. Now, as an aside, if your Pi is in a remote setting, there's a good chance you don't have access to any Wi-Fi networks. Thankfully, cellular is a viable option almost anywhere in the world. And this is where the Blues Wireless cellular note card and the note carrier Pi hat come into play. I just so happen to have one right here. Here's the Pi hat and here's the note card itself. The note card is a great option for low bandwidth data transmission scenarios, like sending sensor data or receiving remote control commands. The note card comes prepaid with 500 megabytes of data and 10 years of global cellular service. And the power savings, well, when idle, the note card consumes only eight microamps, so it doesn't even register on the Pi. You can learn more about the note card at blues.io. All right, well, if your solution is not using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you can likely disable them. Now note if you disable HDMI, USB, and Wi-Fi at the same time, you're probably gonna have trouble interfacing with your Pi, so just that warning. So to disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, let's open up the boot slash config.txt file. Now I just need to save and reboot my Pi, but in my case, I actually don't want to eliminate Wi-Fi because that will kind of ruin the whole point of showing you this over VNC. So I'm going to delete that and instead write this out. And I'm going to reboot and be right back. All right, the Pi rebooted and we're back. And of course, I had to re-execute a couple of those commands to disable HDMI and USB as well. And looking at the data, from the uh, power monitoring device here. It looks like things have pretty much stabilized at 0.43 amps. Uh, not too surprising that disabling Bluetooth didn't do too much for us. Now we can take the next step and go a little bit more hardcore and actually clock down the CPU. So if we wanna really squeeze out, you know, the last few milliamps of, of, of power consumption here, we can make some more changes to our uh, boot config file. Now there's a lot of different settings you can make and I highly recommend consulting the URL I'm going to post in this description to 
get into the nitty gritty details of what can be done to under or overclock your CPU. This is what I found on Reddit actually, as uh, somebody mentioned this as a, as a really stable, low power configuration. Um, if you clock things down too far, you can get you know, really unstable behavior in your, in your GUI as well. So, you know, your mileage may vary here. So I am going to write this out again and I'm gonna reboot again and I will be back. All right, back again and after rebooting and making sure the underclocking settings were set and redoing the USB and the HDMI commands as well, we see we're down to about 0 0.4, 0 0.41 um, microamps being used, which is, okay, relatively impressive. Now, the last step we're going to take is to disable onboard LEDs. Now, this is getting a little bit silly because LEDs by default are awfully low power, but we can go back in and edit the boot.config file. And we can drop in some new settings down here and note that these are actually unique to the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm sure there are equivalents to the other models, but this will dis disable the power LED, the activity LED, and the Ethernet port LEDs. Now, I personally don't expect there to be any changes registered on this, but once again, I will reboot and be back. All right, after rebooting, we're back again. Now, all of our possible power configuration settings are in place, and it looks like we are stabilizing around 0.41 amps, which is, is not too bad, actually, considering you know all the different changes that we made. Now I mentioned that some of these settings do revert after a reboot. If you want to make them permanent, just alter your .bash RC file and you can add those commands so they are executed on boot. Otherwise, there you have it. You know, we saved uh, you know, a handful of milliamps, if you will, when implementing all these configurations. Not amazing, but it's kind of fun to hack on a Pi. Uh, but thanks for watching. If you're curious about prepaid low power cellular on the Pi or any other microcontroller, frankly, head to blues.io and check out the Blues Wireless note card. Thanks.